welcome back. I'll just quickly optimize this code. Um, I'll actually write one function. If you want to write any function, make sure that you write this outside of your public static void main. Okay, so functions should be written outside of the main. Um, where this is ending base class. Give me a second. Yeah. So public static main void main block got closed here. So that I'll start writing one utility to just to avoid code redundancy here. Public uh, get amount okay so here it act accepts web element but you can just pass the string I guess even string value just follow um, this lecture by end of this lecture you will understand what I am trying to achieve here you may not get clue by this time just hold on for one or two minutes get amount I'll set this return type to void for now but later we need to change it okay so I will send whatever string I got using get text inside this get amount block so here for that value whatever I received okay for that specific value I will do the substring and I can store that into this value again and thereafter um, I need to convert that into double right uh, this value so same steps instead of doing there I will write it here so that if you want to do for multiple products you need not repeat these steps again and again we will use this reusable method and that's it that will take care and now once you parsed that by removing dollar and converting into double then you can simply return the amount whatever you have converted return this so when you write the step it will throw an error because it's expecting void when you say void for your return type that means you are not returning anything but here you are returning double value right so move your cursor on this and it's suggesting to change method return type to double because you are sending double value perfect now um, you can actually remove this substring and double parse values you can remove this and you can call this method get amount and pass this string amount one here that's it so now you grab that dollar 280.977 and you are sending into this get amount and this method is now taking care of removing that dollar and converting back to double and you can um, directly assign this double amount to value here okay so now this is throwing an error because we did not we need to create object to call the method present in the class but you can just make it static like this if you make this method static then you need not worry about that perfect so amount two value is amount one value right amount one value is this and again I'll remove these steps and I will say amount two here and then amount two value and perfect and now you can sum this and do that it looks little clean now earlier we are doing lot of operations like parsing double and substring here but now just this get amount will take care of all that stuff okay and this is how you can optimize your code and make it more and more better you can still optimize this code if someone asks you um, 
I do want to use only one for loop that should take care of summing up all these instead of you know uh, writing the steps again and again. You can still do that. I will just show you. Uh, when you are learning one automation tool, it is just not only learning that specific tool APIs, you should also know the best practices of how to optimize your code. So, for i equals to 0, i less, let me take j because I think I have already used i somewhere. No, I have not used it. For i equals to 0, i less than and size, how do I get size? dot size. So, I would take that into integer, integer count. So, that it will iterate through all the products you want to sum up i plus plus and this is a for loop. For the first time you will actually grab this and you will put it i here. So, you got the text, you can say string amount equals to. So, once you get the amount, you will actually pass that amount into double data type with this method, which you are already aware. Now, here comes the trick. Okay, get amount, change method, get amount string to get amount double. Why? Are we passing? So, it is complaining that this is a double. Um, this is a string only, right? Why it is treating that as a double? Okay, let me see find elements dot get text probably I may use amount one only again. I do not know it is weird. Anyways, um, you remove all this code. I am making it more optimized. Uh, let us comment out for now. Okay, I have commented all the code what all I did for summing up. So, loop started. For the first time, 0th index which is will be retrieved maybe 100 or 120, I do not remember that. First product amount will be retrieved and we are parsing that amount into double data type. Done. Now, you need to sum up all these, right? How do you sum up in the per block? So, I will explain you that logic. First of all, declare one variable called sum and set it to 0. Here, you can tell sum equals to sum plus amount and you have to make it double because our sum will be in double because we have decimals there. Now, I will explain this for loop, try to understand please. For the first time, I will show a live demo here. You will really get appreciated with the way we are optimizing this code. Let me add one more product for your convenience. Okay, totally three products are present. First product 160.97. For loop will actually get the count of total products present on that page with this step. It will identify it as a 3. So, loop will run for 3 times. For the first time get of 0, 160.97 will be retrieved with dollar string. So, this get amount method will parse the dollar and it will convert that into double. Now, sum we are, I am declaring one variable called sum and I am initializing that with 0. 0 plus amount whatever we got here 160.97. 160.97 is the final value of sum now for the first loop. 
because we are adding that to the sum variable 0 plus whatever we got from the uh, first product price. Now loop started again. This time it have picked 120.0. When I do get off 1, it pulls 120 and we are neatly parsing it into double. And now when it comes to 38th step, what is the amount value now in the second loop? It is 130, right? 120. That 120 plus what is the sum value? It is no more 0 now. In the first iteration, it is 160.97. Now, sum value is 160.97 plus and the amount I am summing up and that comes to second product which is 120. That is it. Now, this total sum value will be stored into this carefully. Let us say it is around 280 I guess, 280.97, 280.97. Now again loop started for third time and this time it picked 116.97. In the amount 1 it parses and gives you a 116.97. And now when it comes to 38th step again, what is the sum value on the previous iteration? 280.97. So that means 280.97 plus amount whatever we are getting here is 116.97. And again total value of this will be stored into the sum, okay. And here I will simply print that sum, that is it, perfect. You see that how simple now code it is, within 4 lines of code we have summed up all the products list, okay. This is how you need to optimize your code, by writing a logic to sum the integers, okay, sum the integers or double whatever. And that should give your final product of sum of products. And this sum should be equals to total value whatever it is displaying here which is this, right? So let us run this optimized code and see everything is working fine. So now you can remove all this, all these lines of code and make it more optimized and clear. run as Java application and that should start your execution. So this is where you can bring edge in your coding when compared to your peers in the office. Everyone does this but the way you do really matters how smartly you bring up that code. Hopefully it should sum up and then gives the output of again 280.97 which we are expecting. Argentina, I clicked on shop, it should select the products, go to the checkout page, wait for 2-3 seconds and then grab all these. 160.97 plus 120, now it should be 280.97 which is correct. So that means we have successfully implemented this logic without any errors, alright. So that is all I have in this lecture and in the next lecture let us move to the another scenario of validating mobile gestures, okay. Thank you.